Welcome back. In my last video, I said I would be building this Maserati boomerang for the hashtag under a thousand group build. I like the idea behind this build because the subject matter was any kit and you could do anything to it, which is exactly how I like to build my models. So here we go, building the boomerang. I like to do a test fit of any major components to understand how the kit goes together. I've already removed some of the major parts. Now I'm using screw cutters to remove the rest of the wheels. We're going to do a yard sale of all the major parts that go into this kit. This is a pretty basic model. It is designed to be motorized. Pardon my crop, it won't stay like this long. There are those tires again. I really don't like them. Note to self, try to come up with something better. I've figured out, these are the door panels. There's also some metal pins for the front wheels and a metal rod for the rear wheels. The dash fit is a bit vague. We'll have to figure out exactly where it needs to go. The door panels will probably play into that process. Getting back to the body, that warp in the roof looks like it'll straighten itself out by placing the glass in it. Once the glass is solidly glued in, this shouldn't be a problem. Now we're going to do a test fit of the front suspension and steering. It is very simplified, even toy-like. The wheels are kind of cool in a geometric angular kind of way, just like the real car. Back to those instructions. They illustrate using what appears to be a hammer to drive the metal axles into the wheel. Okay, that sounds fun. Here's one wheel, one metal axle, and one hammer. Let's do this. Now we have a somewhat test fitted chassis, and the wheels spin fast. The battery compartment is quite obvious. Moving back to test fit the dashboard. As mentioned before, where it fits is pretty vague. Maybe right about there? Let's put some blue tape to make sure it doesn't move too much. Other than the door panels, this is pretty much the completed inner structure supplied with the boomerang kit. Pretty toy-like if you ask me. It's still cool and will offer all kinds of paint challenges down the road. I've now snapped the body on and we get our first glimpse of what a box stock completed boomerang could look like. I already see the dash really isn't in the right place. This is where the tape comes in handy. This is a good start, but there is something that really bugs me about this right now. There is no engine! It has this giant blank spot back here. You can land a helicopter on it. Time to think about what to do about that. Out of the box, it has this little cover that seems like bringing a knife to a gunfight. 
the real car has a dual overhead cam V8, which is pretty cool. I think it could use a lot more power though. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The first thing that came to mind is some kind of exotic turbocharged V12. I went through my junk box and found this old Lamborghini engine, which is certainly a step in the right direction. But then I started thinking again. Ah, blown Hemi. Sorry, not this time. I started thinking deeper, way deeper. Then I found this, deep in the stash. The Star Wars U-Wing Fighter. Hmm. Whoa, it even has action, light, and sounds. Let's investigate this. Okay, so let's see what's in that box. Oh, these are kind of fun. Hmm. So I drilled a couple of holes back here. And I cut some Aluminum tubing. Goes like right there. Another one. Right there. And then, so after drilling those holes and putting in the aluminum tubing, we now have this. I think I just solved what to do with that giant thing in the back. Yeah, we might just go full spaceship with this. After all, it was kind of supposed to be a spaceship type car. Boomerang. We're just getting started here. Diving a bit deeper into that U-Wing box, I found this magical little morsel. This is the action light and sound device. I really like the shape of the top of this device but it won't fit in the car as is. Time to modify it. So wow, we we totally butchered this. And that's what it does. We, can fix, we don't need any of this. We'll figure out a new place to put the button. That's awesome. Just a screwdriver or a razor saw. <laughs> After getting the top of the bleep bloop device off, it needs to be trimmed to fit on the engine cover. This will add some interest between those two thrusters. Well, I think I managed to fill up that giant blank spot of an engine cover. So this looks like a good place to conclude part one. If you think we're shooting for the stars right now, you won't want to miss the next installment because I'm just getting started and I have all kinds of model car stories to tell. Thanks for watching.